Hey guys, welcome to Quinn's Tree Farm. Coming to you straight through the power of YouTube, right from Cornville, Maine. We are going to talk about the Wallendorf Brush Cutter 4215 today. Got it on the tractor, got it all put together. I'm gonna tell you what I think of it. But the first thing we gotta do is we gotta make some brush to crush. So we're gonna go out in the field and cut down some dead Christmas trees and then get them all piled up for you with the brush crusher. And then we'll talk about, uh, so far, my first impressions with it, how it went going together, and uh, what I think of that. So stick around and we'll get to work.
like that pot. I got, I got my paper here. Tonight we're going to talk about the Wallendorf Brush Crusher 4215 model that I got here on the John Deere 1025R tractor. I ordered this back in late May from Good Works Tractors out there in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And I want to give a really solid shout out to Courtney and his company, Good Works Tractors, out there. Uh, I think they're actually in Paw Paw, Michigan now, which is just fun to say. So uh, either Kalamazoo or Paw Paw, Michigan, uh, either way you slice it, those are fun towns to, uh, to pronounce. But anyways, uh, excellent job, very helpful. He actually called me up. Uh, I call. I sent him an email and uh, he called me back. I, I, I got a little crazy with the shipping. I thought we had a problem. We didn't. Uh, it was right on schedule and he he made sure to make sure that I was taken care of. So uh, check out Good Works Tractors. He has a heck of a YouTube channel, Good Works Tractors, uh, on YouTube and uh, really cool dude. So uh, thank you very much, Courtney. I appreciate it and I've had a lot of fun with this already and it's definitely an asset for my tree farm. I was going to make a how-to video uh, on how I went about putting the brush crusher together because when it shows up, it shows up on a 18-wheeler and uh, you need to have a, either you have a fork bucket on your tractor or uh, spend the extra money to get the uh, lift gate uh, delivery service. Uh, but the, the fork bucket, it, no problem, uh, got it right to the right to the tractor on the back of the truck and it took five minutes to, to take off the truck, but it does come in the crate, it does not come assembled. And uh, it was one of those nights, it was like Friday night at five o'clock and, and I was gonna do a video on it and it just didn't work out. But I will share uh, the YouTube channel that I did use to learn how to put it together. I mean, the instructions are there and that's all good, but we all know in this generation, we're using YouTube videos to get us through the day and learn how to do things. And I want to give a shout out and uh, uh, recommend Clear Creek Cabin Mini Farm uh, on YouTube. So I got my paper here because that one's a pretty, pretty big thing to spit out, but it's Clear Creek Cabin Mini Farm. And he took a step-by-step -step approach on how to put this together. I do want to uh, quickly share a couple of experiences I did have putting it together uh, because there were a couple of things that I think uh, if I had the right tools or if I had better tools, it would have gone a lot easier. All right, see, see these bolts right here, these nuts and bolts? They're uh, self-locking uh, self uh, nuts and they are very difficult to uh, get on with uh, just a wrench and a socket. Uh, you could do it, but there's a lot of pressure there. They're very strong, and once they're on, they don't come off very easily. So I highly recommend either a pneumatic uh, drill, an air drill, or uh, impact wrench, cordless impact wrench, to help you get the nuts and bolts on. It will go uh, a long way in your uh, lack of frustration, so to speak, when you're putting this together. The other issue I had is there's four grease zerks that go across the top and uh, they needed to be retapped. I got three of them in uh, by hand with the, with the wrench, uh, but the fourth one I actually had to go out and get a tap set, tap and die set, because apparently when they paint this, they, don't, they didn't cover them up and there was a little bit of paint in there. That was kind of a pain in the butt. It went together in about an hour and a half. It was a lot easier than I thought uh, than initially. and uh, not a big deal to put together. The last major heads up that I want to share with you, uh, and I have noticed this, I saw this on a YouTube video, uh, I don't remember which one it was, but a guy was upset, he was frustrated because uh, he broke his tractor. And I, it's a forewarning uh, just between two YouTubers that you need to be very careful when this bottom has pressure put on it and, and forces that pressure up onto the lift arms of the tractor and what ends up happening is it causes these pins that hold the bucket on it causes the pins to break uh, and if it's if it's done hard enough it could actually pull 
uh, the pins through the uh, these contraptions here, and apparently they're expensive to fix. I keep calling this a Wallendorf, and it's not a Wallendorf, it's a Westendorf. So I got my dwarfs all done mixed up, but uh, it's a Westendorf brush crusher. Wallenstein makes the, the chipper, Westendorf makes the crusher. You've obviously been doing your research if you're looking at getting a grapple bucket for your tractor. And this is a very interesting design uh, that doesn't use hydraulics at all. The lift arms and the curl function of your tractor operate the top of the grapple. And the bottom uses the science of physics to close down on that. Uh, and that's where the pressure on the lift arms comes into the play that that opens and closes. I haven't really gotten into anything really heavy with it as far as like logs, tree logs and things like that. But I found it to be an excellent addition to the tree farm, especially when handling balsam fir, dead balsam fir trees. There's a couple of problems that I have encountered with it. The biggest one being if I take too much material, sometimes it gets caught up. If I can curl this up here, show them my big man muscles, huh? It will get caught up in those spaces. And that's a problem. Uh, I kind of found a way to bounce it on a uh, stump. I had a tree stump to try to get some pressure and get it out. Uh, and then another time I tried to beat it with a hammer. Ultimately, you're going to kind of get off the tractor and go in there and take care of it. The other thing that I find is, especially with the uh, balsam fir trees that have lots and lots of branches, that sometimes they get caught up, even if it's open and loose and you can't shake it off. You try to uh, curl your bucket real fast and you just have to get off the tractor and take care of that. You need to have some ballast on the back of your tractor so that I get a lot more uh, loose and wobbly uh, with the grapple on. So having uh, the flail mower on the back now just because that's what I've been running. Um, but definitely you want to have some ballast on the back. I don't think I'll feel comfortable uh, actually putting brush onto a brush fire uh, pile. Uh, I think that I would transport the brush to the pile and then throw it on by hand. The reason being is uh, when that brush gets caught up in those uh, grapple arms, uh, it's going to be very difficult if you need to pull those off quickly. And if they catch fire while they're in the bucket, uh, that just is not something that I want to try to experience. Uh, so the plan will be get a brush pile going and then go out and grab the different material. Now, one of the hard parts right now during uh, the summertime is these trees are starting to look really nice and it kills me every time I drive by them, I want to get going uh, on them. And we're going to be shearing here very soon. So I can't help it. I got my clippers and we're going to go ahead and we're going to tidy this little guy up. Because all of this stuff that I'm taking out uh, doesn't really matter. I don't want it to grow anymore anyways, and uh, why not? Looks like it's going to be in real good shape. So as far as I can tell, these are the, uh, they're either a, a frolsum from Weir's Tree Farm in New Hampshire, or they're their blue balsam, and I don't know. Uh, Oh, I can't help it. I'll be right back. I'm getting antsy, guys. Getting antsy.
there, that's a little bit better. That's the only problem with this, you can't stop. All right, I wanna show you one more thing before the night's over. I thought this was pretty interesting. We're over here in the Assover tree kettle field and I wanted to show you, I'm really excited. This is the first field that I ever planted. This was planted in 2020. Uh, first, one of the first videos I ever did was planting these Christmas trees. So April 2020 and it is June, July 1st. Today is July 1st, 2022. And this is what they look like. There is definitely uh, much to be said about the uh, sleep, creep, leap method, I think, in these. Uh, and they're growing uh, great, great gusto. I'm going to have to shear some of them this year. I measured these the other day, and they're about four and a half feet off the ground. So I'm really, really excited. The reason I brought you to this field and to show you these trees is uh, I happen to have one of the video where I was out here working on these trees or something, uh, doing something in that first year that I was doing videos and it popped up and uh, they just look so tiny and now they're so big. Uh, we're in really good shape here. We're in really good shape in this field uh, and these trees make me quite happy. One last time, Westendorf Brush Crusher 4215 is a hit. I would recommend it if you, especially if you were on a budget and uh, for a tree field, I wouldn't call it essential equipment yet, but it is right up there as a really nice to have. Check out Good Works Tractors, Kalamazoo and Paw Paw, Michigan. Courtney is uh, really entertaining and, and he does a good job with his channel. And, uh, yeah. this is, I don't want to mess it up. Clear Creek Cabin Mine Farm. Clear Creek Cabin Mine Farm is uh, where you want to go to learn how to put your brush crusher together. And as always, I'd really rather feel bad in Maine than feel good anywhere else. So there we go, my friends. I'll see you soon.